Hey guys, Dean Mike here, and welcome back to another episode of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. We are back on Windfall Island. Last time, Dragon Roost Cavern was able to take out Goma, free Valu from the Ring Sting, get Din's Pearl, and now we are here to do some side questing. First things first, we're going to go ahead and actually do the Picto Box Challenge, which I botched last time, but I'm going to do it correctly this time. If we remember correctly, we talked to Lenzo, who is the Picto Box Extraordinaire. And he wants us to get a photo of a hopeless romantic, which is this guy right here. This is Garrison. And in order for us to do that, we have to wait for him to just very slowly traipse his way all the way downtown. Now this does take a hot minute, and I'm not going to prolong that like I did last time. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut until we are in position. So I'll see you there. All right, viewers, it's just about time to get into position here. We're gonna hide on this side of the wall. Whoop. Don't wanna get caught, sneaky sneaky. Whip out your Picto box. Zoom in real good on it. Make sure you can see all of Garrison's body. That's part of the quest for some reason. And we wanna take the photo when he's got the letter in his hand. That looks really good. So, hopefully that's good enough for Lenzo. I don't think Garrison noticed us in the slightest. So we're going to go ahead and return back to boss and see if he likes our stylistic attempt at taking a paparazzi photo. Don't actually do that. Taking photos of people in public doing things is weird. Unless they agree to it. Consent. All right. All right. So go ahead and get your Picto box out. Nope. And now we can submit this as our photo. This is like Pokemon Snap with Doctor, not Doctor, Professor Oak. Wonderful. So we'll see if this works. Okay. Seems like Lenzo's in agreement. Wonderful. Wonderful. I should have saved it for that point in doing that, but I didn't. So I kind of, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit on my my uh, my wonderful wonderful quota. So. Unfortunately, <laughs> you're just gonna have to live with that. But anyway, that should be good enough for quest number one. He's gonna use it, okay, that's weird. Let's see what quest number two is. We're gonna do all three today. The second command. So we need someone that's timid and cowardly. Uh, sir, feel attacked now. I intend to flog his spirit to lend him some backbone. That's an interesting approach. Um, so what he wants us to do is get a photo of somebody who has a tendency to be a little bit easily shaken. And the, the person that we're actually going to be looking for is up here on the second floor above the sailcloth guy. We need to find a resident in town who maybe is a little skittish. How about that? Hello, ma'am. How are you today? How do you feel about coffee, viewers? You big coffee drinkers? Never been a big fan of coffee. If somebody offers it to me, I will try it, but nowadays it's really tough to even know what coffee is. Is it like, is oh, I only drink black coffee, or I want coffee with 10 pumps of espresso and syrup and sprinkles, like whatever you're into, I guess. It's all kind of part of it. So there's not a lot of people around in this coffee shop, but there is one customer I wonder if this guy would be a little under alarm if we were going to throw a pot at him? Do you think that would scare somebody? What do you think? He looks pretty scared to me. He's a shivering. Let's see if that's good enough. I kind of feel bad doing that. Apparently this is supposed to... Whoa, what are you doing there, Link? Supposed to... Stir some boldness into him, or whatever Lenzo said. It seems kind of mean. You know, maybe that's just who he is. And you're trying to change him. And I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> I have been on Windfall Island twice now, and, uh, you know. We're still just getting the hang of it. And when I say twice, I mean twice in this run-through, not twice ever. I've been on Windfall quite a few times in my life, and... 
See if this is good enough. Okay, seems like number two has gone through. Very nice. Oh, that's not a very nice way to, to, to say that. Okay, second test complete. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that use it efficiently phrase. I don't, mm. Oh, oops, I forgot to ask him what the third one. <laughs> I forgot to ask what the third one was. Oops. Hopefully the reward for this whole quest is worth it. I don't know what it is, I forget, but. Open your heart and mind, viewers. Somewhere in town is a couple. Oh, gross. The two have never spoken. Okay. Okay, so he's trying to make a love connection. He wants to become Cupid the end. Timid burglars in the house of love. View viewers, are you a timid burglar in the house of love? Okay. Very cool. So we can become his number one pupil. Very exciting. I think he's more excited about all of this than we are. We're just trying to make a buck here. Getting a little creepy there, Lenzo. Okay. So I want to say that the two people involved, it's this woman in here in this uh, orange dress. She is looking for love. Get that nice telephoto lens zoomed in. We're gonna wait for a young gentleman to capture her heart. Hopefully this does not take a million years. I don't remember uh, who the dude is. This guy though, Garrison's like, oh, uh, hey, you take photos of me, huh? With my sweet wispy mustache? All right. So this is, this is Linda and we need someone to come and be her lover. Hopefully that happens soon. I don't remember how long this takes, if this is gonna take any longer than like the next couple minutes. Probably gonna do another cut, cause I don't want to waste your time. I hate doing cuts in these videos, but Garrison here will be very upset if I don't. You better cut away, you better cut away. Okay, all right, all right, take it easy. Yeah, so we're gonna, we'll wait until her future lover comes back into frame and then I'll, uh, we'll bring them together with a Cupid's arrow, AKA a picture. Okay, viewers, here he comes. This is Lenzo coming around the bend. Gonna make sure we get him in frame, taking a peek at Linda. Oh yeah, look at that, that's pure love. Hopefully, Lenzo does not mind that the killer bees are in the background. It's just a little bit of flavor for the photo. Nothing wrong with that, right? Okay, let's see what we got. Nope, let's see what we got. There we go. Lenzo, do you approve? Okay, seems like we are three for three. Pretty proud of our work. Viewers, what do you feel about this one? Do you feel good about it? Do you feel like what we're doing is socially acceptable? And Lenzo is going to efficiently use these photos, whatever that means. But we've done it. So we are now his official assistant. And he doesn't want us to be taking photos in black and white. So of course he's going to give us the upgraded deluxe picto box. We can take color photos. Hooray, welcome to the 1950s. We've done it. So this is very nice. And we will take advantage of this actually in due time. One of the things that we can actually do pretty early on, I don't know if this is required to have the deluxe picto box. Um, but there's actually a guy in town who is having a bit of a rough go. We'll say that. And maybe some photography could cheer him up. It's this guy right here. Let's talk to him. Nobody understands how he feels. Right under his nose. What are you talking about, bud? Okay, so this is Kamo. Um... He is not doing great. So we're gonna actually figure this out. Um, 
he wants to see he loves he loves astronomy we'll say that he loves astronomy and he wants to be able to see um maybe a full moon so let's talk to him again because you need to i'm just trying to help you open up sometimes it's nice to <laughs> i couldn't care less it's nice to develop some interpersonal communication he wants to take a pictograph of the first perfectly round pale thing. Not my behind. That is not the option. No cheeks for you. Okay. So he wants to see a pictograph of the full moon. And it's daytime, viewers, so how are we going to do that? Huh. Well, we're actually going to play the Song of Passing, which I believe is... Right, left, down. And that will, of course, pass enough time and gas to nighttime. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to do is look for the moon, wherever she is. I don't think that's the full moon. Does not look very full to me. So what we're actually going to have to do is do this a lot until we get to the actual full moon. And I'm not going to, of course, make you wait. This is going to be an episode with, unfortunately, more cuts than I would like to do. But there are seven phases of the moon, so I might have to potentially do this seven times. I don't know how far into the moon cycle this would be considered, but that is not it. So I will be back with a nice, beautiful full moon for you. Okay, viewers, enough time has passed. I only had to do the Song of Passing six times, which is annoying because there's seven phases of the moon, so that means that I literally was in the one phase right before it. But if you take a little peek up here, ooh, viewers, what's that big, beautiful, pale thing up in the sky? It's a full moon. Yes, it is. Okay. Did I save that? Hold on a second. Ooh, let me check. <laughs> I don't know if that's saved or not. I hope it did. Do the... Okay, hold on. Show me the thing. What am I doing? I'm in all kinds of buttons. I just want to know if I took it or not. Can I see what I... Oh, you can do selfies. Look at this. It's very 2023 of me. Okay. ZR is the album. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right. So... We will go back to Camo eventually, um, but that's not the actual goal of right now. We have a bit of a strange thing to do, um, which this is kind of what I was hinting at before is what I'd like to do, and this is going to make the game exponentially easier. This is, once again, an episode all about side quests, and this one is pretty important. I don't know if you can do this before in the GameCube version, but you can do it here in the um, in the in the sorry you can you can I don't think you can do this in the GameCube version, um, but you can do this in the uh, HD version. Wow, I really struggle with that one. Um, I want to say we're heading to do a little bit of auctioning. We want to get our say in some nice items. Or I did some stuff off camera. This episode's just kind of all over the place, but it'll make sense later. Had to get some more rupees because in the auction house, there are multiple items you can buy. Treasure chart. Pieces of heart, piece of heart, joy pendant. I don't know what order they're in, if it's like an RNG thing, but it seemed like in order for me to cycle to the item that I do want, which hopefully will pop up here, I had to go through and do three or four auctions for the other items that I didn't really care about, but ultimately will want in the end. But this item, something you're going to want for sure, is something that does cost quite a bit of money. It starts at 100 rupees, and you'll need probably anywhere between 200 to 300 to make this happen. So I sailed around the Great Sea a little bit, fought some Bacoblins, picked up some more Joy Pendants, and now we can get Roll. I'm gonna show you how to do this 
Not a foolproof way to make this happen if you time it poorly, but this is just kind of the method that I've tried a few times and it seems to have worked. So I'm gonna show you how to do just this one auction. We'll take care of this, get the item, and then we will do a couple of quick additional side questy things and then get rolling. This episode's all about that side quest. So now we can find out who is going to be our adversaries in this auction, just regular townspeople. Hopefully the item that we are looking to bid on is what I need. Shush your mouth. There it is, the, fam the fabulous T-Swift sale. So this actually is one of the best items that you can get. It's only available in the HD version. This is an item that will allow you to uh, to sail wherever you want on the boat without having to use the Wind Waker to change directions. Very convenient. A quality of life item that they added to this game. So thank you, developers, for thinking of that. So here is the overall dynamic of the auction. This will, of course, be started off by Gummy Bear. He actually will bid first every time. And then the rest of the villagers, islanders, whatever you want to call them, will progressively jack up the prices while the auctioneer will be counting down an unseen timer. It is not a real life minute, it's an in-game minute, which is stopped every time that he addresses the people that are bidding. So just keep hitting A, let them doing their thing. There's going to be a certain point where you're going to want to hit A yourself. And what that will do is slowly fill up the bid bar that you have at the bottom. You're going to want to do that. And doing so will give you the chance to put in your bid. But you're going to want to wait quite a while. Putting in your bid is only something you should be doing near the end. So that way they don't outbid you at the last second. I've done this a few times to really understand the dynamic of it and to figure out the mechanic. It was very frustrating and felt like a waste of time. Especially because the items that I was bidding on weren't the swift sale. I didn't care about anything else. All right, so once you see that, the time is running out. That's when you're gonna to wanna to start hammering the button. Probably get yourself maybe about halfway, two thirds. And once you do that, you can just let it ride. It will automatically fill up on its own. Is that lady's name Poople? Pimple? It will autofill. And they're just going to keep bidding and, you know, raising the price on us, which is great. I think I did this one time off camera in practice. I don't quite remember how much it was, but they will start to ramp it up near the end, like a bunch of jerks. But there is a way... Not to avoid this, but to guarantee that you'll win, which I will show you. Oh, thanks, everybody. All right. So we're going to still continue to let it go. Maybe give it a couple more bumps on the tush. There we go. So this is what you want. When he says five seconds remaining, that's when you really start to hammer it. And you are going to bet somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to 15% over what this already is set up to. So 10% would be 20 rupees. We're going to go ahead and do 22 rupees. I think that should be enough. We'll see if this is good. And what this will do is everybody gets so crazy astounded by our deep pockets, our thick fat wallet that this will stun them. You can do this multiple times if you want, but that seems to be the best method. So there you go, 230 rupees. I think the time that I did this in practice, it was 250. Save myself 20 bones. So there you go. You don't have to manually change the direction with the Wind Waker ever again. It'll just automatically go the way that you want it to. Is that your wallet in your pocket? Or are you happy to see me? So there you go. If you have any trouble getting money, go ahead and go around the Great Sea and swim around to these little pockets of light. There'll be these little round areas. In doing so, that will net you 50 rupees every time. So anyway, 
That is not it. That is not it. <laughs> I don't actually remember what- hold on. There we go. The Song of Passing is what I was trying to do. We have one more thing that I want to do before I consider this episode complete. This very jump cutty episode. I apologize for that, but it's worth it. And this isn't even all the side quests that you can do. We will come back eventually. But first, do we remember this guy? He's the one that wanted to see our full moon. We're gonna pull up our Picto box. Fire that bad boy up and show him the astronomical aesthetic that he wanted to take a peek at. So he wanted to see a full moon. This is the one that off camera I had to, I think, do this song of passing maybe like eight times because it's one phase of the moon per attempt. But he gives us a treasure chart and I believe this one will eventually lead to a piece of heart. So that feels pretty good. There are additional things that you can do side quest wise here that I think are fine. Actually, you know, there's one, one more I forgot. I love this though, look at that. Ah, it's a jar of pee. All right, so let's go in here real quick. I don't know if I can do this actually. Do I have? I do. Okay, so I have an empty bottle. At one point, it did have a fairy in it, but this is the potion shop. Not quite as fun as the potion shop in Skyward Sword, but we have chew jellies. We've been collecting the red ones all around, and in collecting those alongside an empty bottle, And showing him the right thing, which is in our spoils bag. Oops. We can trade that in for a potion. Oh yes. You best believe it. Peanut butter and chew jelly. So we have 10. And we get a free serving of the red potion. This will fully heal your life. So every time you get five chew jellies and you turn it in, that's what you get. Pretty decent exchange. I'm not sure what the return on investment is for this, if it's good or not, but you know, just so I don't accidentally spend it. Uh, put that there, and then uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to accidentally use our stuff. But that's great. Now that we have the swift sail, we will head out next time with the King of Red Lions to continue our adventure. So thanks for watching everybody, I've been D-Mike. This has been The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker HD, Side Quest Edition, and I'll see you next time. Bye.